Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah the Brick. Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Majesty delegated the BDF Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa to attend a graduation ceremony of the Second National Defense Course at the Royal Command, Staff and National Defense College, and the 12th uh, Joint Command and Staff Course. The ceremony began with verses from the Holy Quran. Then the commander of the Royal Command Staff and National Defense College delivered a speech in which he affirmed that the unlimited support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa made the college a center for academic knowledge in all fields, increasing the college's endeavors of development. The BDF commander in chief then awarded certificates to the graduates of the Second National Defense Course and a number of honorees of the 12th Joint Command and Staff Course, congratulating them on their graduation. The commander in chief. Uh, conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King to the graduates. Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed expressed pleasure in the graduation, affirming that the achievement is an addition to the distinguished military scientific edifice which is inspired by His Majesty the King. He expressed thanks to the college's commandant and faculty for their efforts that contributed to the course's honorable outcomes and the qualification of its participants, as well as the development of their abilities. The BDF commander-in-chief stated that the college harnesses all potentialities to provide the highest level of military qualifications. He highlighted the current circumstances in the world today with the pandemic and its human or human economy and social repercussions, asserting that Bahrain has taken pioneering steps to combat it, implementing the directives of His Majesty the King. The Commander-in-Chief reiterated uh, the BDF's unwavering kind keenness to undertake its patriotic role within the national campaign to combat the coronavirus through harnessing all its potentials, uh, facilities and uh, specialized competencies to combat the pandemic at the front lines in order to protect the health and safety of citizens and residents. The Interior Minister General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, Education Minister Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, Information Affairs Minister Ali bin Mohammed Ramehi, and senior BDF officers and military attaches of the participating countries also attended the graduation ceremonies. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sport, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, addressed 2020 graduates enrolled in public and private schools in Bahrain. أخواني وأخواتي طلبة مملكة البحرين أحب اليوم أن يهني وبارك لكل طالب وطالبة جدوا واجتهدوا وأصروا على مواصلة تعليمهم وثابروا خلال هذه الفترة الاستثنائية وأثبتوا أن ما في شيء مستحيل. ما مكانت الظروف وهذا العشم وهذه سمات البحرين شرف لي بأن أشارككم اليوم إنجازاتكم بعد السنوات من الدراسة والمثابرة من خلال الفصول المركزية الافتراضية وغيرها من الوسائل التعليمية غير التغليدية اللي أقرتها مملكة البحرين ونفذتها وزارة التربية والتعليم مشكورة نمر اليوم تحديات فريدة في تحولات في الحياة العلمية والعملية وهذا التخرج بالذات اللي عن بعد وبديل في الوقت الراهن عن حفل التخرج التغليدي اللي نطرتوه 
طول عمركم تقريبا ولكن اليوم كل المجهود والعمل والالتزام وخصوصا في الظروف الحالية أثبتوا أنكم قد هذا الاختبار وما انقطعتوا عن الدراسة والتزمتوا بتأدية المطلوب وهذا يدل على أسراركم وعزيمتكم واستحقيتوا التخرج بكل جدارة هذه اللحظات نهاية لرحلة كانت مليئة بالتحديات والإنجازات وبداية لرحلة جديدة وخطوة انتقالية مهمة لتحقيق طموحكم وهذه الانطلاقة لاتخاذ قراركم بما يناسب مهاراتكم لانضمام مستقبلا لفريق البحرين إن شاء الله وتكونون نموذج للشباب البحريني الطموح وسعيكم المستمر للإنجاز شخصيا مع كل نهاية أجتازة أبدأ العمل بكل جد واجتهاد لخوض السباق التالي فسباقي دائما هو تحدي لنفسي أولا وكل مرحلة من الإنجازات اللي, أت... اللي أقوم بها بتحقيقها تساعدني في تحقيق الإنجاز التالي المهم ألف ألف مبروك لكم النجاح والتخرج ومبروك لكل أب وأم ولكل ولي أمر كانوا خير معين لكم وكانوا الدافع والمحفز لكم على استمراركم وكل الشكر والتقدير لجميع العاملين في الميدان التعليمي على كل ما بذلوه من جهد وعمل متواصل والله يوفق الجميع إن شاء الله دام احنا تحت راية سيدي صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة الله يطول بعمره ويحفظه أمورنا إن شاء الله أنها تكون بخير وانتوا هذا إن شاء الله العام عام سعيد وانتوا من ضمن عام فريد من نوعه وانتوا إن شاء الله أنكم تكونون فريدين من نوعكم الله يوفقكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs, national security advisor and chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that Bahrain's achievements in the field of equestrian sport are due to the keen interest and ongoing support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, as a result of which many international honors have been collected. His Highness expressed happiness with the horse which won first place in a race in North London. He affirmed that Bahrain occupies a special place in the sport international. In light of its long-standing competitiveness, His Highness said that the winning horse enjoys great capabilities that helped it to achieve first place and that its victory represents a great incentive for the achievement of further international honors in the future. His Highness praised the technical abilities of the horseman Ryan Moore and his efforts throughout the race as well as the efforts of its train trainer Richard Hannon Jr. The Southern Governor, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, participated in a meeting held remotely with a number of citizens as part of the program Tarabat, held by Bahrain Institute for Political Development in cooperation with the Ministry of Interior within the framework of implementing the National Plan Initiative to promote citizenship and national belonging. Our Bahrain. His Highness affirmed uh, that the Southern Government uh, witnesses uh, growth and progress in the security, social, and development fields thanks to the directives of His Majesty. Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa. The support of uh, the government uh, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and the support of His Royal Highness uh, the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Khalifa noted that security, communication and development are the foundations to achieve strategic and development goals, highlighting the government's uh, keenness uh, to meet the needs of its citizens. He pointed out that security is an important pillar of development and it is a priority in the work of the government through the concerted uh, security efforts and joint cooperation where the security committee supervises a number of security and preventative initiatives and campaigns, programs and recommendations. The governor added that the southern government launched uh, many channels to communicate with citizens including the weekly council which is a platform to monitor the needs and opinions of citizens, noting that the government activated its electronic channels by launching the southern application. His Highness also highlighted the role of cooperation and coordination with various ministries and governments or, or governments and private agencies in following up on various developmental and civilizational projects that meet the people's aspirations through the Governance uh, Coordination Council. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif al Rashid Zayani, through visual communication, participated in the extraordinary meeting of the Executive Committee at the level of foreign ministers of the member of states of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, chaired by the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Chairman of the Executive Committee, His Highness Prince Faisal bin Farhan bin Abdullah al Saud, with the participation of Ministers of Foreign Affairs of the Member of States of the Committee and the Secretary General of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. 
Corporation, Dr. Yusuf bin Ahmed Al Athamin. The Minister of Foreign Affairs delivered a speech in which he praised the sincere efforts made by Saudi Arabia during its current presidency of the OIC, expressing application for the kind efforts made by the Secretary General of the organization in serving Islamic causes. He praised the efforts of the General Secretariat in organizing this meeting to discuss the aggressive plans of the Israeli occupation government aimed at annexing parts of the occupied Palestinian state, including the Jordan Valley, the Northern Dead Sea, and the lands on which the Israeli settlements are built. He noted that the uh, unilateral actions by the Israeli occupation government is in this regard are a flagrant violation of international law and relevant international legitimacy resolutions and have serious repercussions on the security and stability of the Middle East and the world. It also adds uh, to the Israeli record of crimes and violations against the Palestinian people. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Bin Rashid Zayani, participated today in a virtual high level forum organized by Singapore and the Elders Foundation in cooperation with the United Nations to mark the 75th anniversary of the UN Charter under the theme The UN Charter at 75 Multilateralism in a Fragmented World. In his statement, the minister thanks Singapore, the Elders, and the United Nations for organizing the conference. He said that recent pluralism has taken place without much public debate or advocacy noting that while it is relatively easy to make a case against an independent, uh, multilateral, globalized world, the positive aspects have only been felt incrementally in small steps and without the benefits being fully and publicly highlighted. The Minister of Foreign Affairs added that the huge global challenges that, occur or that occurred 75 years ago created a clear monument that contributed to the establishment of the United Nations and a global multilateral system at a time that, that the need for such a system and its benefits was clear but in recent decades unconscientious multilateralism as has or has prevailed dr zayani said that uh, regions can set an example with an open and sincere call for the benefits of multilateralism and interdependence at the regional level noting that in areas such as the middle east like-minded nations might set out a clear ambitious yet realistic vision of how such cooperations can deliver peace and he pointed out the importance of clarity of the desired benefits for states and that memberships in this gathering is conditional on respecting certain principles and values to become a motivation for countries to be an active parties building the necessary trust and cooperation to reach real security and lasting prosperity. He said that effective or effective regional cooperation is an essential component of pluralism, expressing his conviction that multilateralism could not succeed if there was a vacuum between individual nations and global bodies. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamidan, met with the members of the Council of Representatives, Abdullah Khalifa al Dawadi and Salman Al-Maliki. During the meeting, the minister stressed the importance of maintaining the national workforce and developing them professionally to ensure the sustained success of companies and establishments. He discussed with the lawmakers the ongoing cooperation between the executive and legislative branches, as well as the efforts of the ministry to consolidate the professional stability of Bahraini workers in the labor market and maintain the employment rates in order to address the current challenges created by the coronavirus pandemic. The meeting also highlighted the ministry's efforts to oversee the protection of workers in the private sector from unjustified and illegal dismissal, as well as labor rights and gains. MPs Al-Dawadi and Al-Malki commended the remarkable efforts exerted by the ministry to protect workers in the private sector, as well as provide the social protection umbrella and assistance for Bahraini families during these exceptional circumstances in line with the directives of the government. They highlighted the importance of intensifying social efforts in order to ensure workers' rights, strengthening social protection and securing decent living for them in accordance with the relevant national laws. A press conference was held today by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus on the latest COVID-19 developments at the Crown Prince Centre for Training and Medical Research at the BDF Hospital. The Ministry of Health Under Secretary Walid Al-Mana affirmed the importance of individual commitment and adhering to decisions, precautionary and preventative measures to protect the health and safety of all to overcome the corona pandemic and called on everyone to reduce contact as much as possible. He noted that daily uh, performed lab tests revealed a rise in the number of cases caused 
cases by contact with existing cases, adding that the Ministry of Health is following all indicators related to the development of the virus and is also monitoring local results. Al-Mana affirmed the uh, continuation of national efforts to combat the coronavirus to deal with high efficiency and flexibility with various developments. He noted that curative health services continue to be free of charge in precautionary quarantine centers and isolation and treatment centers, highlighting that isolation center capacity stands at 8,511 beds of which 5,061 beds are being occupied. And quarantine center capacity stand at 3,410 beds, of which 492 beds are occupied. He affirmed that the citizens' health is a priority and expressed thanks to call triple four send a call center for its great efforts with more than 445,000 calls received since the center was launched. For his part, infectious disease consultant and microbiologist at the BDF hospital and member of the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Manaf al Gahtani, stressed the importance of following issued instructions that aim to protect the health and safety of all. The consultant of infectious and internal diseases at Salmania Medical Complex, Dr. Jamila Salman, affirmed the importance of individual commitment to precautionary measures to protect the health and safety of citizens and residents. She noted that recklessness causes the spread of the virus and commitment guarantees its containment, affirming the ministry's continuous keenness on increasing daily tests to discover new cases early. She also mentioned the reasons behind the increase in cases, recently noting that the recovery of many active cases is a result of the treatment protocol followed and the continuous health care that they have received. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 5,061 with 503 recoveries and 469 registered new cases. The Ministry of Health urges everyone to adhere to the rules and affirm the importance of following instructions such as washing one's hands with soap on a regular basis along with avoiding shaking hands and close contact. Moreover, covering the nose and the mouth when sneezing and avoiding public spaces when possible. In our regional news, Saudi Arabia reported its highest ever increase of 3,717 new cases, bringing the total in the kingdom to 112,288. The city of Riyadh had a particularly high increase with over 1,300 cases. A health official warned that the number of active coronavirus cases and the virus-related death toll in Saudi Arabia is rising because several members of the public continue to ignore preventative measures. 40% of COVID-19 cases reported in the kingdom so far are the result of people failing to follow rules instructed by the ministry. Dozens of young men and women who did not adhere to precautionary measures when they left their homes and then came into direct contact with members of their family, including the elderly, infected several other people. Kuwait recorded 683 new coronavirus cases in the past 24 hours, which rises the total number of confirmed infections in the country to 33,823. A total of 1,126 people recovered from the virus in the past 24 hours, bringing the number of recoveries in the country to 23,288. Meanwhile, the death toll rose to 275 after two people died due to complications from COVID-19. Some of the new cases are of people who had direct contact with previously infected individuals. Kuwaitis make up 274 of the new cases, Indians make up 130, Bangladeshis make up 58, and Egyptians make up 51 of the infections. Yemen's Information Minister Muhammad al ariani said uh, that uh, Houthi militia are looting and extorting the private health care sector. al ariani said that the complaints from medical staff living in areas under Houthi control reveal additional taxes on owners of hospitals, private clinics and medical workers in the private sector. He added that the Houthi militia, after destroying public health sector, went to impose additional taxes on private hospitals and clinics, drug manufacturers and stores on basis of military effort. al ariani said that the militants have left the public without a defense against disease but equipped the hospitals where their leaders and personnel stay with the highest technologies. 
Germany's Foreign Minister Heiko Maas today warned Israel that its plan to begin annexing parts of the West Bank would violate international law. But he declined to say how Germany or Europe would respond. The visit to Jerusalem, Heiko Maas' first trip outside of Europe since the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic, comes just weeks before Israel intends to extend its sovereignty over the West Bank settlements in line with President Donald Trump's controversial Middle East plan. The annexation plan has come under harsh criticism because it would destroy any lingering hopes for establishing a Palestinian state. Speaking at a news conference, Moss said that Germany and the European Union were seeking clarity about the Israeli plan, but he made a point that Europe considers annexation incompatible with international law. A raging fire at a natural gas field in remote northeastern India has killed two firefighters and forced nearly 8,000 people to leave their homes today. A spokesman for government-owned Oil India Limited said that workers have been trying to cap the wells since gas started leaking nearly two weeks ago. The well caught fire with explosions yesterday and flames were leaping nearly 15 meters into the sky more than 36 hours after the inferno began. The fire in the periphery of the well has been doused, but it has spread mainly because of the presence of natural gas condensed in the region. Flooding in south and central China has caused more than a dozen deaths and forced hundreds of thousands of people from their homes. Chinese Ministry of Emergency Management said about 228,000 people have been forced to seek emergency shelters due to the flooding since June 2nd. Initial damages were estimated at more than $500 million, including the destruction of more than 1,000 homes. Flooding was particularly bad in the southern region of Guangxi, which or where six were were listed as dead and one missing, and in Hunan province just to the north, where seven were recorded as dead and one missing. In our light news, the UK government announced today that zoos, safari parks and drive-in theatres will reopen on June 15th as part of easing of the coronavirus lockdown. After being closed for nearly three months, staff members of Nelsley Safari Park said the need to keep the animals well cared for meant their costs had continued to mount despite the absence of income from visitors. Staff member Jonathan Cranknell said that without financial support from banks, they would not have been able to keep the Safari Park open. They said they were excited at the prospect of the park reopening.